Good morning, everyone. My name is Magali Bardet. I'm a researcher at the University of Rouen in France and a member of the INRIA Research Institute. I'm going to talk about an algebraic attack on rank metric code based crypto systems. This is a joint work with Pierre Brio and Jean Pierre Tillich from INRIA, Maxime Bros, Philippe Gabory, Vincent Léger, Olivier Ruata from the University of Limoges. You all know the Michaelis crypto system that was invented in 1978 at the same time as the famous RSA crypto system. The system is based on the hardness of the decoding of a random linear code. The public key is a linear code that looks like a random linear code but that has an efficient decoding algorithm. The secret key is a hidden structure that provides the efficient decoding algorithm for the public code. To encrypt a message, we just add an error to it, and the decryption is just recovering the error. There are seven among the 17 chems submission to the NIST competition for post-quantum cryptography that rely on the Michaelis crypto system with different families of linear codes. The main drawback of this system is the size of the public key, which is the description of the linear code. The challenge for the systems is to reduce the size of the public key by using some structure while keeping the public decoding hard. In the last decade, a sequence of proposals have been made in rank metric code-based cryptography, starting with the GPT crypto system based on Gabitoline codes that are analogs of Ritz-Solomon codes in Hamming metric. It was totally broken by Overbeck in 2005 with a key recovery attack. Recently, proposals have been made that have led to two different camps that are currently in the second round of the NIST competition for post-quantum cryptography, namely the Rolo and the RQC crypto systems. Rolo relies on LRPC codes like LTPC codes in Hamming metric and can be seen as an analog of the latest based crypto system and true. It has been shown that the security of RQC relies only on the decoding problem in rank metric. The advantage of these schemes is that their structure allows for smaller public keys than other proposals in the Hamming metric. Note that it is also possible to build signature schemes using rank metric. Our contribution in this paper concerns algebraic attacks in order to solve the decoding problem in rank metric. An algebraic modeling is a set of equations whose solution is the error we are looking for. We start from the modeling from Uriski and Johnson, which is a set of bilinear equations depending on two blocks of variables, and we add to it a new set of minors of a particular matrix that are of rather small degree and involve only one of the two blocks of variables. We provide a new strategy to solve our algebraic system that is specific for this kind of system and is more efficient than a generic strategy. In particular, while generic strategies will first consider the equation of degree two, we first compute the Grimner basis for the minors and then add the bilinear equations to end the computation. The complexity analysis of our strategy gives better results than the previous combinatorial attacks, which means that the security parameters for the crypto systems have to be increased to reach the same security level. We also provide various benchmarks to support our results. For instance, consider a family of linear codes over f2 to the n with length n and dimension n over 2. Up to now, the most efficient generic decoding algorithm was the information set decoder, that is a combinatorial type of algorithm, and have a complexity in 2 to the r times n, whereas our algebraic attacks have a complexity in 2 to the r times log of n. We will now go into details, starting with some definitions. A linear code is just a vector subspace of a finite vector space, usually over a finite field. We denote by G a generator matrix whose rows form a basis of this vector subspace. Every element in the code is a linear combination of the rows of G, 
and is called the code word. If the length n is a composite integer, then a word of length m times n can be viewed as a matrix with m rows and n columns. We can now define the weight of a code word by the rank of the corresponding matrix and the distance between two words is the rank of the difference of the two corresponding matrices. Decoding a word corresponds to finding the nearest code word with respect to the rank metric. Given a generator matrix J and a word Y, decoding Y is equivalent to find a word M such that Y minus M times J has the smallest possible rank. This can be rephrased as the min rank search problem, given a matrix Y corresponding to the word Y and matrices G1 up to GK corresponding to the rows of J find a linear combination of rank not greater than R. The problem is done to be a NP hard program and the best known algorithm solving it have exponential complexity bounds. In this talk, we will focus on some particular codes specified as linear codes over FQ to the M, which is an extension of FQ. By fixing a basis of FQ to the M over FQ, we can see any FQ to the M linear code of length N, dimension K, either matrix code over FQ of length N times M and dimension K times M. The benefits of choosing such families of code is that the known families of matrix code that have an efficient decoding algorithm are FQ to the M linear codes, and such codes have a shorter description than general matrix codes we gain a factor m in the size of the public key. From a security point of view, even if the general decoding program is not known to be NP-hard for FQTZM linear codes, there is a randomized reduction from the decoding program in the Hamming metric to the FQTZM rank decoding program. This means that decoding in the Hamming metric, which is NP-hard, is easier than decoding FQTZM linear code for the rank metric. Progress in the design of combinatorial algorithm to solve the rank decoding problem suggests that the additional structure coming from the FQ to the M linearity may not have a significant impact on the complexity asymptotically. We will see that algebraic attacks can take advantage of this structure. We will now address the algebraic modeling of this decoding problem. We start from the work by Uriski and Johansson in 2002 and try to solve it using grovner basis techniques following levy dvl and Perret in 2006. We add the word we want to decode to the public code. Then, thanks to the FQTZM linearity, the code CY contains QTZM vectors of weight R that are all multiples of E for any lambda in FQTZM that is non-zero. If the error was small enough, the code CY contains no other small rank word vectors. This means that we can search for a particular solution and specify some of the unknowns. Such code words are characterized by two conditions. The rank of E is equal to R and E belongs to the code CY. The second condition can be easily described algebraically using a parity check matrix of the code which is a generator matrix of the dual of the code, and the equation E times the transpose of HY equal to zero. The condition that E has rank R can also be algebraically described. If alpha is a generator of FQ to ZM over FQ, then E as rank R means by definition that the coordinates of E generate a vector space of the dimension R over FQ. We call S1 up to SR a basis of this vector space, and S is the matrix of the coordinate of this basis in FQ to the M. Then C is the coordinates of E in this basis S, and we can write E as a product of two matrices of rank R. We now have a set of equations, 
Marcus solutions are exactly the code words in CY of rank at most R. Note that this system has a lot of solutions. Indeed, for a given code word E, any basis S will give a solution, and also any multiple of E is a solution. This allows to specify some variables, or uh, in another word, to search for a particular solution. Here we will assume that E has rank exactly R, and we will specialize the identity uh, in S, uh, 0 on the first column, and 1 on the first column of C. With the specialization, with high probability, the system has exactly one solution. The system is affine and bilinear with two blocks of variables, the C ones and the S variables. And we look for the solutions over FQ. If we choose M and K linear in N and R in the order of the square root of N, then we have another determined system with many more equations and variables. Finally, the system has only one solution, hence the Bremner basis for any monomial ordering has this very simple shape. We want to understand the behavior of a Bremner basis computation and its complexity, and then find a more direct way to compute the solution. Complexity results regarding bilinear systems are known for generic homogeneous bilinear systems. Fogere, Safeldin, and Spellauer describe the behavior of a generic Kremner basis algorithm for such systems, leading to a complexity boon for the Kremner basis computation of such homogeneous systems. They also show that for generic affine bilinear systems, at some point in the computation, there will be degree falls, which means that some polynomials will have a smaller degree after reduction. And they give a complexity estimate for the cost of the Kolmanov basis computation in terms of the degree where those first degrees fall occur. It is largely widespread that the first degree fall is a good measure of the complexity of Kolmanov basis computation. This is not always true, although in some particular cases, as for generic affine bilinear systems or semi-regular overdetermined systems, it can be proven that it is the case. For generic affine bilinear systems, the first degree fall are related to the left kernels of the Jacobian matrices associated to the system. More recently, in PQ Crypto last year, several authors show that for the Kipnis Shamir modeling of the mean rank problem, the Jacobian matrices have a particular shape that leads to degree falls in a much smaller degree than in the generic case. In fact, the Uriski Johansson modeling also has the same particular shape, and we will use it to produce a new algebraic modeling for the rank decoding problem. The set of maximal minors of the matrix C times H transpose that are minors of size R belong to the ideal generated by the initial quadratic equations. To prove that, we compute formally the Jacobian matrix of the system, the elements in its left kernel identify the first degree falls, and compute formally the value of the polynomials of smaller degree after reduction that are exactly the maximal minors of C times the transpose of H. We are therefore able to compute directly the polynomials of degree R that occur during a Krebner basis computation in degree R plus 1, without doing all the computation in degree R plus 1 that the generic Kolmanov basis algorithm would do. We have just formula for the result of the computation. Let's have a closer look at those equations. The matrix C time H transpose has R rows and N minus K minus 1 columns. Hence, there are R choose M minus K minus 1 equations over fq to the m, or m times more over fq. Moreover, each equation is a minor, that is the determinant of a submatrix, and we can express 
the determinant of a product of matrices as a sum of determinants using the Cauchy Binet formula. Now, we consider our polynomials as polynomials in the new variable uh, CT that are maximal minors of C. A variable CT hence represents a polynomial of degree R with factorial R monomials. Note that as we specify the first column of C, some of the CT are of degree R minus 1. Viewed in terms of those new variables, the polynomials Pj are linear polynomials and we can try to solve this linear system. Solving this linear system can be done by externalizing a matrix whose columns correspond to the variable Ct and the rows correspond to each equations that are indexed by J which corresponds to the subset of columns we take for the determinant, and i, uh, which corresponds to the highest coefficient of the polynomial p sub j expressed in the basis of fqtzm over fq. We take the highest coefficient. As the linear system is homogeneous, there is a vector space of solutions. If we have more rows and columns, and the matrix has full rank, then the right kernel has dimension 1, and the solutions are the value of all the variables expressed in terms of a particular one, which is the free variable. We simplified the system max minors into a new system having fewer monomials of our factorial R, and R minus 1 choose N minus 1 equations of degree R minus 1. Experimentally, we notice that M has maximal rank with very high probability. We distinguish three different cases. The most favorable one is the overdetermined case. We call it overdetermined because we have more equations than unknowns for the linear system. In that case, we can express all minors of C in terms of a particular one, and we can add to the original quadratic system a lot of equations of degree R minus 1. In the intermediate case, we produce some equations of degree R minus 1, but we do not have the value of all minors of C. And the hardest case is the underdetermined case, we don't produce any equation of degree R minus 1, just reduced equations of degree R. Here is the experimental strategy we are proposing in the paper. We compute the initial quadratic system, then we compute the maximal minors equations that are of degree R. We linearize the set of maximal minors with respect to the CT variables and take the resulting equations of degree R minus 1 if we have some or the resulting equation of degree R if we have no fall of degrees. Then we add those equations to the quadratic system and compute a columnar basis, which is the truncated columnar basis obtained by ignoring any computation in degree greater than D. All our experiments are done using the F4 algorithm implemented within MAGMA. The experiments suggest that R is sufficient in the overdetermined case and that we need R plus 2 in the underdetermined cases with various intermediate values. We compare our strategy with the results given by Levy DVL and Perret in 2006. All parameters but one were overdetermined cases. We give the size of the extension field, the parameters n, k of the code, the length and the dimension, the rank of the error, n sub s, n sub c, and n x are respectively the number of variables in s, in c, and the number of quadratic equations. 
uh, this column gives the degree and the number of equations that we produce after simplifying the system max minus. And this is the time needed for the echelon form computation to compute those equations. For r equal to 2, we produce linear equation of degree r minus 1. We compare this strategy with the generic columnar basis computation. The first row gives the timing for the generic columnar basis computation just over the first initial equations. And here we have to add the timing to compute the max minor system and then to reduce it and add it to the initial system. The benefit of our strategy is to decrease the maximal degree of the polynomials during the computation. This has an impact on the size of the matrices built by the F4 algorithm during the computation. For R equal to 2, the benefit is not so clear, and sometimes constructing the max minor equation and simplifying them may take more time than the direct computation. But for larger degrees, the gain is important. For the only underdetermined case, we couldn't find directly the columnar basis due to a lack of memory, and we had more than 200 gigabytes of memory. The successful strategy was to first compute the columnar basis of the minors, which is here and then add the resulting equations that are of various degrees between 2 up to 5 to the initial quadratic equations. Then the total timing is less than 3 minutes. We give here the theoretical complexity of our approach for the row and RQC crypto systems depending on the heuristic that for overdetermined systems, a columnar basis up to degree r will give the solution, whereas for underdetermined systems, we need to go up to degree r plus 2. Basically, the system for the first and second security level in the NIST competition correspond to overdetermined cases, whereas the parameters for the third level correspond to underdetermined cases. We see that in all cases, our estimate bones are smaller than the complexity given by the combinatorial attacks. In conclusion, with a good understanding of the first steps in a general columnar basis computation, we were able to perform the first step theoretically and get a formula for new equations, the minors that depend only on one block of variables. We then introduce those equations before adding the quadratic ones, using a change of variable that saves a factor of factorial r on the number of columns of the matrix. This leads to an algorithm more performant than all previously known attacks. I will finish this presentation with spoilers. Since the submission of the paper to Eurocrypt, we worked with the authors of the PQ crypto paper and improved those results by using two additional strategies. First, as the equations uh, in the minors only involve the C variables, it is more efficient to specialize the identity in the C matrix instead of in the matrix S. Then the minors have degree from R down to 1, and the minors of degree 1 are the variable C, I, J. In the overdetermined case, the simplification of the minors gives directly the values of the variable C, and then solving a linear system gives the value of the S variable. The second improvement consists in performing an exhaustive search on some columns of C, to reduce to the overdetermined case. In fact, this seems to be the best strategy for the parameters selected in the NIST submission, ROLO, and RQC. And I give you the complexity estimate that we have for ROLO and RQC with this new strategy that completely breaks the parameter from the NIST submission. The consequence is that the value of R has to be increased by 2 to keep the claim security level. 
Thank you for your attention. This work was partially funded by the French INR through the CBCRIP project and by the Re European Regional Development Fund and the French region Normandy.